before the white man came to the New World, the American Indians occupied the broad land we now call the United States. They were a great people of many tribes. Some lived in the desert, others on the plains, still others in the forest, on the lakes and rivers. Their natural enemies were numerous, and in addition, tribal wars and feuds took their toll. Yet always, the Indians faced their foes without fear. Their sons and daughters of today face new enemies. One of them is a cruel disease, tuberculosis, which steals away the strength of the victim until he is lifeless. Yet Indians of today have not lost the courage of their father, and this courage will not fail them. This enemy, too, they will conquer. Never look back to the house of the dead. It is our custom that we live our dead in peace. Grandson, your father has gone back to earth. We, we start anew. Grandpa, will the car kill my mother too? Hola. Who knows? Slow talker is running. We have always gone out to meet our enemies, but now no more. Now we die. Yes, we die. But it is sad. First your mother. Then your father died of tuberculosis. He says we die because we do not keep the old customs. I wonder. Slow talk is brave, yes. But he may be mistaken. The old weapons of our fathers cannot fight tuberculosis. You mean we should heed the white doctors? I am loyal to the old man. I have news. I am going to the boarding school. Yes? Is your mind really made up? Yes. I honor our people, respect them. But white people have much to share with us. I will learn something and live better. And you will come back. <laughs> Goodbye, Nima. Goodbye, Robert. Goodbye, slow talker. Goodbye.
forsaken the ways of his people. For these two comrades. Good luck to you, says Don, as Robert faces new experiences in school. It all seems strange at first, but Robert soon likes it, and he learns fast. He discovers the wisdom left by others in books. Both mind and hand are trained. He learns the skillful use of tools and machines. Order and cleanliness become part of his daily life. Sports and games help him to build a strong body and quick muscles and train him in the art of team play with his fellows. <laughs> Boys, the doctor has come to make the physical examination. Boys, you all look strong. But there are the invisible worms that can harm the body. We call them germs. And so each student gets a physical examination. Robert, I think I'll start with you first. Ever thump a covered water barrel to hear how full it is? This is just like that. Doctors learn how lungs sound when healthy and when sick. Warriors put their ears the ground to hear the footsteps of the enemy. Is that so? We have the same idea. Lungs make sound. One kind of sound when healthy, another kind when sick. Stand here, please, Robert. Chin up there, shoulders against. That's it. X-rays, we call them. The rays pass right through the body and throw a shadow picture on the film in the holder. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Finished. Now tomorrow, when this film is developed, I will show you a picture of your heart and lungs. Here, Robert, is the X-ray picture of your lungs taken yesterday. These are the collarbones. The ribs, lung, all healthy, healthy, all healthy, but that spot, see it? That spot is made by tuberculosis, Robert. No. Tuberculosis? But I am so well. I don't cough. It can't be. Don't be discouraged, Robert. The lung will heal if you go at once to a sanatorium and stay there until the doctor says you may go home. And so, Robert finds himself in the sanatorium where under the guidance of doctors and nurses, he learns to fight his enemy in bed. healthy. He's just lazy. Easy going. In bed. Bah! How long do you think he'd be in the hospital? I don't know. A long time, maybe. 
The nurse says Robert must be quiet in bed. <coughs> I told Robert he's a sissy. Our ancestors were brave. They stood on their feet and fought their enemies until they were whipped. What's this I hear today? Young men lazing around in bed? Ah! But, Grandfather, perhaps that is not the way to fight this enemy. On their feet. When they do, they die. <coughs> Don, don't you think you should go to the doctor? No. I am strong. Tomorrow I will be better. Hello, Robert. Mind if I sit down? Now that you're almost well, I'd like to tell you more about this disease. You can help your people better than I can to understand. Here's the left lung. Here's the right. Here's the windpipe. The lung is soft like a sponge, and it works like a bellows. Tuberculosis usually starts up here. It may seem harmless at first and heal in a short time. But, sometimes it spreads, like a little patch of weeds. Bit by bit, it destroys the lung. Then the man begins to cough and spit up damaged lung flesh. It spreads more. The man loses his taste for food. He loses weight. He gets weak. And maybe spit up blood. He goes weaker and thinner, and at last, he dies. Is there no medicine to stop this disease? No. Though men have hunted for such a medicine for years, but nature can stop it and heal it as it heals other sicknesses. Robert, what do we do for a broken leg? We tie it up with Sticks and straps. Exactly. Why? To keep it quiet so it can heal. Doctors call that a splint. We cannot tie up the lung, but we can rest it by lying quietly in bed and gaining strength from good food. That makes sense. Now, will you tell me again about that little operation you did on me so I will be able to explain it to my people? It is called pneumothorax. That means air in the chest. Here, let me show you. A small hollow needle is pushed through the chest wall. Air flows in. The soft lung collapses like squeezing wool. It cannot breathe. It rests. It heals. When it is all well again inside, the lung is allowed to blow up and breathe again as before. Wonderful. But here's what puzzles me. What causes the disease? You told me once before it was caused by a germ. But what is a germ? Well, it's really a tiny living thing. Some call it the invisible worm. But it is alive. It grows. I can prove it to you. Come to the laboratory. Here in this tube is a kind of jelly, clean, nothing on it. Here is another, something growing on it. A short time ago, it was as clean as this one. Do you know what that is? Millions of tuberculosis germs. 
a tiny bit of spit from a sick man was smeared on here, and it was put away in a warm place. The germs grew like a field of corn. Oh, so when a few germs from the lungs of a sick person get into the lungs of another, they start growing? That's exactly right. And that is why sick people should be in the sanatorium. There, they can't spread the seeds of their disease to others. We fight a range fire by clearing a strip. The fire can't jump. Now you see, Robert, why your people suffer so much from tuberculosis. They crowd together. Some are careless about spitting. When people are not clean, it becomes easy for the germ to get from one to another. Some people don't eat right, and they become weak and cannot fight the germ. Sheep dipping time. From all directions for miles around, the sheep and goats are brought to be dipped in a harmless solution under the direction of government experts. This ensures a fine, healthy crop of wool. Everybody has a good time, everybody helps. But the heavy work is done by sturdy young men, like Don. Slow talker, Don is very sick. He has tuberculosis. The heavy work at the sheep dip started his lung to bleed. The doctor said I was a good fighter. I did what he said. Poor Don. He did not understand. Nima, don't you think the doctor should examine you too? Oh, Robert. Do you think I could have it? Anyone can have it. It is passed from one to another. I take Nima. And the doctor shall examine me too. So you see, Nima's lungs are all right. Now, we look at your chest. Here is the shadow of tuberculosis in your lung. You have had it a long time, but it has not killed you. You are a strong man, stronger than the disease. Then it is true that I have given the disease to my family. Now, I know the enemy. I, too, will fight him with knowledge. Your way. Go, my children. I stay. May you have many children, healthy and strong.
what a fine baby you had. Grandfather will be so proud. Low talker, we salute you. The enemy has taken away your beloved Don and Don's parents. Now you yearn to go home, to mingle with the people, the fields and hills and waters, all these you love. Yet you choose to stay. You will not bring the enemy to their fireside. By your example, the people again will conquer. Mm -hmm.